Welcome back to the channel that's just mock drafts and mock draft reactions at this point. Uh, I will be getting back to some rebuild content, but it's the NFL offseason. This is my favorite time of the year because I'm a Giants fan, and I don't have the NFL season to look forward to every year. It's terrible. I mean, the Giants are a disaster, but that's not what this video is about. And uh, every time I say anything bad about another quarterback in leagues, uh, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones sucks. And I know Giants fans hate when I say that, but it's true. Anyway, today we're looking at Bucky Brooks' uh, 2021 NFL Mock Draft 1.0. We do a lot of these types of videos on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed already, scroll down, hit the sub button. It's very, very easy. It would help me out a lot. On the path to 300K, sounds so amazing, but you guys have been so awesome this year, so I appreciate it greatly, hitting that subscribe button as frequently as you have been. But Bucky Brooks is an interesting analyst to take a look at because I feel like his mock drafts, go off the wall more often than anybody else, which isn't really a bad thing, in my opinion. It's February. It's before free agency. Mock drafts, I think, should be a little bit crazy because if everyone follows the same like thing that everyone else is doing, you're probably not going to find the happy medium of what actually could happen. You're trying to find the balance between a team taking a player because the player is so good and them also needing a different player at a position of need it's finding the balance between drafting for position of need and drafting for best player available so no one should agree with every mock draft and no one should disagree with every mock draft whatever bucky brooks nfl mock draft 1.0 haven't seen it number one is going to be trevor lawrence that's a fact and there it is uh i've also heard people saying that justin field should go to the jags because of the connection to urban meyer as if Urban Meyer ever coached Justin Fields at Ohio State. It just didn't happen. You know, maybe he had a hand in recruiting him at some point, but there's no connection from Justin Fields and Urban Meyer. There just isn't, really. Uh, Trevor Lawrence to the Jags, easy pick, best player in the draft. But Justin Fields is coming up at number two. He's going to the Jets. It's really, really interesting to determine what the Jets are going to do. It could be a quarterback, and if so, is it Justin Fields? Is it Zach Wilson? Maybe it's even Trey Lance. Did they go offensive tackle? Panay Sewell, Rashawn Slater. Did they go receiver? Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle. Did they go something else? Did they trade down? I think they should take a QB. And you couldn't be mad at Justin Fields if you're a Jets fan. They might like Zach Wilson more, but you can't really be mad at Justin Fields. I think Zach Wilson's a better player, but Fields is pretty close. Justin Fields is really, really good as well. Dolphins go Jamar Chase. Can't hate on this either. Big time receiver. And the Dolphins are lacking a true number one, in my opinion. Falcons go Zach Wilson. We've talked about this before. And there's always the hate of giving the Falcons a quarterback. And it's like, oh, you, 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 you're you an idiot if you think they're not going to restructure his contract. It's like, you, you can't predict that. You can't assume that's going to happen. You're the idiot. Zach Wilson is super high upside, and the reality is that Matt Ryan is aging quickly with a bad contract, and the Falcons can get rid of him after this season and not really lose much. At this point, at this point, Matt Ryan is not your franchise QB. He might be good enough for the next two, three years, certainly potential for that, but he is not your franchise guy anymore. His age and his play is just not at that MVP level that we saw uh, only a few years ago. They need to look to go QB. They're picking in the top five. It's a strong quarterback class. If one of the top three QBs is on the board, I think you have to take one. Number five, got the Bengals going Panay Sewell. Got to protect Joe Burrow like that. Kyle Pitts of the Eagles is super interesting. And this is what I was talking about. And I didn't, yeah, I haven't seen this, but Bucky Brooks likes to get a little bit outside the box. And the Eagles... They've loved two tight end sets. They took Dallas Goddard fairly high uh, within the top two or three rounds. And they had a really good combo with Zach Ertz for a while. And Ertz is going to be gone uh, in the near future, I would take it. And Pitts just isn't a tight end. He is a versatile weapon that can line up on the outside, in the slot, or in line. Even play some uh, potential H-back type role. Kyle Pitts is a really good player. I think if you like him more than Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddell, why not take Kyle Pitts? It is a little bit weird because you're, you know, looking for more of a traditional wide receiver or maybe even a corner with this pick, maybe even a linebacker if you like Micah Parsons that much. But I I don't think it's all that crazy. We've seen how great tight ends can kind of make an offense dynamic. Look at Travis Kelsey with Kansas City. I mean, he had 1,400 receiving yards. If you can make it work, make it work, and they might be able to. 
Lions take Jalen Waddle. I think Waddle's the uh, best receiver in the class. I've taken heat for that. I don't care. The, the top three receivers are so good. I wouldn't really care about any order. I do think Jalen Waddle is the best. I did an entire video about why. But Jalen Waddle to the Lions, they're not really going to have any receivers on the roster. You need to get a big time playmaker, and Jalen Waddle is exactly that. Like the pick for the Lions. Panthers go Trey Lance, potential QB of the future. I think Lance has franchise potential for sure. Panthers don't really have their franchise guy with Teddy Bridgewater right now. So Trey Lance could be a developmental player that you develop over the next few years, and he could become a beast. You're taking a bit of a risk because he is a developmental type player, but really, really high ceiling, big potential in my opinion. Broncos go Patrick Sertan, first cor uh, corner off the board. I feel like both of the top two CBs in this draft are solid fits in Patrick Sertan and Caleb Farley. Both can be elite in a press man type scheme, and we see that in Denver quite frequently. I think it's a good scheme fit. I think Farley works as well, but I don't hate Patrick Sertan of the Broncos at number nine. Farley goes to the Cowboys. I think this is another one that makes sense. The Cowboys just don't really have a secondary at all, and Farley is a really, really solid prospect as well. Giants go Gregory Rousseau. This one's interesting. I am a Giants fan. I critique Gregory Rousseau in a video, uh, but I think people have blown that out of proportion a little bit. I don't think Rousseau is going to be a terrible player in a bust forever. I just think he's not refined right now based off what we saw in 2019. He didn't play in 2020. You don't really know what you have. He's extremely raw at the position, but the upside is certainly there with his length and versatility across the defensive line. Here's the thing. I feel like the Giants have a pretty solid defense already, and a developmental edge rusher maybe isn't my favorite pick for them. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But I feel like the big thing holding them back right now is lack of production from the offense. I feel like this should be an offensive player, someone that can separate. If Devontae Smith is on the board at number 11, Devontae Smith should be the pick here in my opinion. So it is what it is. I, I don't hate it, but I just think there are better things the Giants could do at that spot. J.C. Horn to the 49ers. They need corners pretty badly. I think that makes sense. Uh, Chargers go over Sean Slater. Another thing, you got to protect Justin Herbert. Another pick, I think, makes sense. Vikings go Quiddy Pay. Solid value. They really could use someone on the other side of Daniil Hunter. Pay's a solid player. I think he's a good scheme fit as well. He's got really high potential as well. I think this is a pretty solid pick for the Vikings, who could also go the other side of the line on the offense with this pick, but that one makes sense to me. Parsons to the Patriots at 15. Uh, great athleticism on the offensive side of the ball, that's or defense side of the ball. That's always valued from the uh, Patriots. Versatility is huge. And Michael Parsons can be like the queen chess piece for the uh, Patriots. I think that's right. I'm not really a chess guy, but people use the term chess piece, and apparently there's only like one piece that can move all around. I don't know. I just don't know chess. I'm going to sound ignorant, but yeah, Michael Parsons is extremely versatile. Again, I feel like the Patriots should target the offensive side of the ball here, especially with a player like Devontae Smith on the board. I don't know how you pass on Devontae Smith for Micah Parsons. And that's not to say that Micah Parsons maybe isn't going to be better long-term than Devontae Smith in relation to what he actually brings to a team. Like maybe Micah Parsons has top five linebacker potential. Let's just say, for example, he does. And Devontae Smith maybe you don't think has top 10 receiver potential. But for what the Patriots need and based on how they can develop defensive players... I don't really feel like you go linebacker here. I don't really feel like you take Parsons. I feel like it has to be Devontae Smith. Who goes the next pick to the Cardinals? This is an interesting one. This is another team who I feel like definitely could be in position to take a receiver. In this instance, even though their defense needs a lot of work, this just might be best player available and you have to pull the trigger. So I can respect that from the Cardinals. Uh, Raiders go Jeremiah owusu koromoa Versatile cover linebacker, going to be probably your weak side linebacker. And the Raiders have a pretty weak linebacking core. So Awusu Koromoa is a pretty good fit. 18, the Dolphins go Najee Harris. Uh, this is one I've done before. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I like him going back, teaming up with Tua, giving him kind of a safety net out of the backfield. He's a great receiver, and he's also just solid four to five yards of carry type player. I think Najee Harris is really, really good. They just might have more pressing needs. On the offensive line, maybe at linebacker here, 
maybe even on the edge. Najee Harris is a really good player. Whenever you talk about a first round running back, there's going to be question marks there at this point, just based on how you can uh, get similar type playmakers down the board usually. And I know Dolphins fans don't particularly like this one. I don't hate it, but there might be more pressing needs. Washington football team goes Mac Jones. We've talked about uh, teams valuing or valuing his leadership extremely highly. And Mac Jones is a low floor type player. He could come in immediately and be probably one of the best um, 20 QBs in the league. That's maybe a little bit of a stretch immediately, but I think Mac Jones maybe doesn't have top 10 quarterback potential. I think this is a guy that you see around like the Kirk Cousins type ceiling, like someone like that. But like, is that worth a first round pick? It probably is. Probably is. At number 20, we have the Bears going Elijah Vera Tucker. If he falls to 20, I like that versatile offensive lineman. I guess in this instance, they'd probably play him at tackle, which that definitely works. They have a power run type system in Chicago. Uh, they have to with David Montgomery and no quarterback. Their offensive line is bad. I can see them going receiver here. I like Rashad Bateman at this spot as well, but offensive line, especially tackle, should be in play. Colts go Christian Darasaw. That would probably be my pick for the Bears. But, I mean, Vera Tucker is a really good player as well. Can't really be too nitpicky with that one. Colts would need to go tackle here. Basically, what it comes down to is that Anthony Costanza retired, and you got to protect the quarterback, whoever it ends up being. And Costanzo is a huge loss. Darisaw is a pretty good replacement. Titans go Aziz Ojolari. Perfect 3-4 scheme fit, in my opinion. I like that one a lot. They need edge rusher pretty bad. Jets go Travis Etienne. Home run hitter type running back. Great potential for Travis Etienne. He's my running back too, but I think he's a really, really good player. Similar in terms of total talent with Najee Harris, even though they're going to do different things in the NFL. Um, ETN can probably be a two or three down running back pretty easily. Definitely like this for the Jets. However, I do think there are more pressing needs in running back here in the first round. And ETN might be a potential Pro Bowl type running back. But I think with all the holes on their lineup and their roster, you go edge here. You even go offensive line with some of the players still available. You go corner, maybe even safety, linebacker. You got to do something to to boost that defense. I don't think running back in the first round for the Jets is a good pick. Uh, Steelers go Nick Bolton. This one, this one's neat. Haven't seen this one before. Um, I mean, he's a pretty athletic player, sideline to sideline type guy who's a really, really hard hitter. Doesn't really have a great feel for coverage at this point in his career, but could be a good fill-in um, for the pa or for the Steelers, Pittsburgh Steelers, who traded for Avery Williamson just to improve their linebacking core. I'm not sure that this is the best pick for the Steelers. I don't think it's the worst one. I think if I were the Steelers, I still probably look to go offensive line. You need to boost up that offensive line if Alejandro Villanueva leaves. I don't know how Steelers fans don't realize that's more of a need. It's a huge, huge need. But if Alejandro Villanueva comes back, yeah, you can afford to go other positions. I'd probably look to the edge at this point if I were the Steelers with maybe Bud Dupree leaving. Jags go Christian Barmore. Don't hate that. Their defensive line was super bad last year. I think they'd also uh, like be well-served to go with a pass-rushing style defensive tackle to go alongside their kind of nose tackle type player they drafted in the third round out of Ohio State last year. Why is his name eluding me? I'm not sure. His name is Von Hamilton. That's right. Uh, that's my bad. I completely forgot his name. I don't know why. All I could think of was Tyler Shelvin, who's an LSU D tackle, who's uh, eligible for the draft this year. But yeah, um, he was really good last year as a nose tackle. So they could use someone that can actually get after the quarterback. And Christian Barmore can do that a little bit. So I think that's a fine pairing at defensive tackle down there in Jacksonville. Their defense is pretty poor in general. It is uh, not what it used to be, that's for sure. Browns go Zayvon Collins. I love this fit. Someone that can come down and rush the passer um, as well as play off the ball. He's huge. He's 6'4", 260, and he has versatility for days. Edge rusher, off the ball linebacker, inside backer. I think he's going to find his fit as a strong side player in the league, but I really, really like Zayvon Collins. 
Baltimore Ravens go Jalen Phillips. I like this one a ton as well. Uh, Ravens are probably going to lose both Matt Judon and Yannick Ngakwe. Jalen Phillips is a really, really good replacement as a nice uh, edge rusher there. Now, I don't think he's the best like 3-4 style fit, but I think he's a really, really good player. This might just be best player available for the Ravens, and I can get behind that. Trayvon Merrick to the Saints. We talked about this recently as well. I'm not sure that safety is the biggest need for the Saints. I recognize that Marcus Williams is going to be a free agent, and there's no cap room, but I'm I'm thinking if you have a first round pick and you're the Saints, are you really going to take a safety in round one when you're maybe going to lose Trey Hendrickson as well? Linebacker is a big need. Safety is the running back of the defense. If maybe even nose tackle as well, kind of in that same vein. I just don't think you take, unless they're otherworldly, I really don't think you take a safety in round one just because you can find good ones down the board. And this is a pretty depthy safety class. I like a lot of the safeties. Like Richie Grant is quite good. Javon Holland is quite good. I'm not sure that you take Trevon Merrig there in the first round if you're the Saints, when in my opinion, you have more pressing needs. And Rashad Bateman's on the board. You can take a receiver here. Rashad Bateman's so good. Like, I don't know how teams just keep having him fall. Jalen Mayfield to the Packers. Where is he playing here? Well, you have a left tackle. In my opinion, you kind of have a right tackle as well. I'm not sure where Jalen Mayfield's going to play. Like, Billy Turner wasn't too bad. I don't know. That That's interesting. Um, I guess I guess he's plugging in at right tackle. I feel like there are more pressing needs for the Packers. Wide receiver, cornerback, linebacker. Maybe in that order, but probably corner, wide receiver, linebacker in that order. I don't love it for the Packers. I don't. I don't. Uh, Bills go Carlos Basham. Showed out at the Senior Bowl. Carlos Basham has uh, super high potential. He fits in easily into a 4-3. This is a decent fit for the Buffalo Bills, if not an amazing one. They need help on the edge, and Carlos Basham could be that. I think he's a 3-4 defensive end, type 4-3 defensive end, or 4-3 with inside flexibility uh, to rush, like B-gap or something like that, like going after the guard. I'm not sure he has the athleticism to play, like, outside. I, he, he's definitely not an outside linebacker, but as a defensive end, I think you have something there with Carlos Basham. Chiefs go Kadarius Toney. Man, they're really going for that um, crazy, athletic, hyper-flexible, versatile uh, wide receivers in there with Tyreek Hill and Nicole Hardman. Now Kadarius Toney, I'm not sure it's the right type of receiver. With Rashad Bateman on the board, how do you not go Rashad Bateman if you're the Chiefs here? Toney's a really, really good, really fun player. I just feel like you have players like him already, in Tyreek Hill especially. And Miko Hardman's also a huge speed threat. Tony's slower than all of them, but is maybe more elusive than all of them. He's a super, super freak. He's fun to watch. I don't ever suggest watching highlights because you're only seeing a player at his best opposed to what he's going to give you on a down-to-down -down basis. But Kadarius Tony, his highlights are so fun. <laughs> they're, they're so wild. Uh, and then at pick number 32, Joseph Osada of the Bucks. Love an edge rusher here. Just because uh, the Bucks are losing Shaq Barrett, potentially. And there's not really much on the other side rushing the QB either. So, Joseph Osai, perfect fit. And teams do not seem to value Rashad Bateman at all in these mock drafts. I don't get it. Rashad Bateman's a really, really good player. Wide receiver one potential, in my opinion. But that is going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think of Bucky Burke's mock draft. Uh, I didn't love it. I don't think it was terrible, though. I don't think any mock draft is terrible because you never really know what's going to happen, how the NFL views certain talents versus NFL media. But that is going to do it for me. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Taking it back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.